we use the Word of God to renew our minds on in that liberty so we walk in that liberty which we have in Christ Jesus. In 1 Peter chapter 1, Hebrews, James, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15. But as he which hath called you is what? Holy. So be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Called to liberty, yes, but called to walk. Called to be holy, not unholy. Called to walk circumspectly. To walk in alignment and harmony with his word, because his word is his what? Says it back here. Now, <laughs> Acts chapter 13. Acts 13, and in verse 2, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Separated, called, called out to work. You see that? Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work unto the work whereto I have been what? So we're called out to do what? Work. Not sit around, twiddle our thumbs. Not sleep until 12 noon. We're called to do what? Work. I don't like it, Lord. Matter indifferent what you like, where will the word says, call to work, get to work. <laughs> work right tremendous isn't it called by grace we're called to be saints we're called in one body we're called in liberty we're called I forgot the next one what it, oh we're called to walk we're called to be holy we're called to work well if you remember we have the power of what and the wisdom of what? I think we can do a little work. <laughs> You're beautiful. Bless your heart. Second Thessalonians. Chapter 2. Verse 14. Whereunto he called you, by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. That says that you're called to obtain glory by our Lord Jesus Christ, by what he accomplished for you and me. That's the record. Called to obtain glory of or by our Lord Jesus Christ. The glory that Jesus Christ made available, He has called us to. That's why it's a glory road. <laughs> glory all the way, bless God. In Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, verse 12. For the scripture says in verse 11, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be what? For there is no difference between the Jew and the Gentile. For the same Lord over all is rich, not poverty stricken. He is rich unto all who call upon him. He is rich unto all. For whosoever, verse 13, shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? And if you'll remember the earlier record in Romans, to call upon the name of the Lord is to confess with your mouth what? 
the Lord Jesus, and to believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 14, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not what? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not what? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Well, you never knew it, but you were a preacher, did you? You are. Well, you're talking all the time. That's preaching. Right. You know, you're wrapping the word, you're laying the word on them. Preachers are not something you send through those years in school and then you put a little ointment on them. How shall they call in whom they have not believed? How can they believe because they've not heard? How will they hear without somebody telling it? Look, God called us by Jesus Christ, right? He sanctified and preserved us in God as he called us. He called us as sons of God. It, we learn that God is not only faithful, but able and willing to do what he's promised. He's given us the power and the wisdom of God. We were called by grace. We're called saints. We're called one body we've called to liberty. We're called to walk. We're called to be holy. We're called to work. We're called according to his word to obtain glory that Christ Jesus made available. Now, how are they going to hear this unless you tell them what the word says? It's the only way it can be done. How shall they preach, however, verse 15, except they be what? Sent. And the word sent is the same word as the word apostle. How shall they preach except they be what? Right. It has to be the called of God. Well, we're the called. Born again of God's Spirit with this one body ministry. And we've got our orders. The orders that were initiated by God through Christ Jesus to the believers. Now then ye are ambassadors. Those are orders. I have given unto you the word of reconciliation and the ministry of reconciliation. Those are orders. Well, if he's given it to us, who's got it? But I don't believe it. I mean, nothing to do with my believing whether I've got it or not. The Lord says I had it. The Lord says I've got it. Now it's up to me to renew my mind to know what I have. Put $100 in the people's slavings bank down here at New Knoxville. <laughs> Let's say... I put it in, Mrs. Werewell comes home and says, I don't believe we got it. Well, whether she believes it or not, if I put it in there, we've got it, right? Now, it's my job to learn to believe <laughs> what the Word says. And I want to tell you, that's a real challenge today. It is much easier to believe what the world says than to believe what the Word says. And the world will always degrade the Word, class, It'll tell you that you are less and that you have less than what the Word says. How shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of hatred, revolution, destruction, fear, worry, anxiety. No, the gospel of what? Oh, what a message we have in our time. We're right on. <laughs> Everybody's talking about peace, and here we sit with the greatness of the Word, and we walk on it with that gospel of what? That's right. Man, we've got a real call. And when we preach the gospel of peace, we bring glad tidings. 
Hasn't your heart just thrilled in your community when somebody brought you that word, that gospel of peace? When you heard for the first time that God wasn't angry at you? That he didn't go around and kill people because he loved them so much? Man, what a gospel of release that is to find out that he's a gospel, that it's a gospel of peace. It brings good tidings, glad tidings of good things. Reminds me of Matthew, doesn't it, where the annunciation about the birth of Jesus Christ by the angels. Good tidings of great what? Joy. The Savior has been born. Well, bless your heart. In Romans 8, I wish I could make this live as big to you as it lives in my soul. It's just effervesces on the inside. It sends chills up and down my spine. Goose pimples. Because to realize that we've been called by Jesus Christ, that we have this, whether we like it or not, we've got it. So we've got to learn to like it. We've got to learn to know what we have. Because you're born into a family and you have access to all the wealth of that family, which is God in Christ in you. Listen to Romans 8, verse 30. Whom he did predestinate them, he also what? Called. Them he also called. And whom he called, those he what? Well, praise God. Justification is a legal situation. He legally justified us. It isn't in my works. It is in the work that Christ Jesus wrought for me. 